Now for our ADHD brain, dopamine, we want it, we love it, we don't have enough of it. And so you may be thinking, okay, well, if I'm met met, does that mean that I don't have ADHD? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Rethink ADHD. So as promised, I'm continuing the genetic series. I got a little bit behind, that's okay. Uh, well, last time we did this, we talked about SLC682. And again, all of these genes fit into something that is called pharmacogenomics. So if you haven't watched that video or the video prior to that explaining what that, what that word pharmacogenomics means, do go back and look at it because it'll add some context to this next gene that we're gonna talk about, which is COMPT. So COMP stands for catecholomethyltransferase. So you can see why we shortened it to COMP. Nobody had time to be saying it over and over again. Uh, and what COMP does is it helps break down two things, norepinephrine and dopamine. Now we know about dopamine, we know that for ADHD years, that's either low or the process of fun it functioning in the body is a little bit, hmm, a little wonky. So that, so COMP in particular helps break down those two things. And when we look at people's genetics, they can fall in three buckets for COMP. So you get one gene from your egg donor, one from your sperm donor, between those, they're going to determine which, uh, what is your status in COMP in particular. So you can be either val val or you can also hear this referred to as GG. So val val or GG. You can be val met, and you may hear this referred to as GA also. Or you can be met met, and you may hear this or see this referred to as AA. So I want you to know the different ways that this may pop up. If you go to Google and you start researching this, you might not see val and met. You might say see G and A. So just know that. Um, G is for Val and A is for Met. Don't ask me why, it's a long conversation and unnecessary <laughs> for the purpose of this video. If you fall in any of those three categories, when you fall in those three categories, it changes how much of the COMPT, which by the way is an enzyme because it, it breaks things down. So it determines how much of that COMPT you will have available in your body to break down dopamine and norepinephrine. So if you're Val Val, you have really high levels of COMP, which means you may have lower levels of dopamine and norepinephrine. If you are valmet, you have intermediate levels. So you kind of like hanging out in the middle, in which case you're gonna have intermediate levels of dopamine and norepinephrine. And then if you are met met, which is actually the one that's really been studied for a variety of different reasons, and you'll see, if you are met met, then you will have higher levels of dopamine and norepinephrine. I shouldn't say will, I should say you may, you might. I'm saying may, might, because all of these genes that we're talking about in this series are still under study. They're not 100%. Mm, we think we know initially what they may be used for, but there's still a lot of work to be done. So you might have higher levels of dopamine and norepinephrine if you are met met. Now for our ADHD brain, dopamine, we want it, we love it, we don't have enough of it. And so you may be thinking, okay, well, if I'm met met, does that mean that I don't have ADHD? No, not at all. That's not what that means. Rather, there have been some studies to determine whether or not individuals with ADHD that are also met met, whether or not they have increased executive functioning or does that change the way the ADHD may manifest? But really and specifically, this gene has been studied for how it may change the way methylphenidate in particular works in the body. And unfortunately, for those of us that fall in the other two buckets, uh, Val, Met, and Met, Met, the research hasn't really found a whole lot there. But for those of us that are Val, Val, or GG, again, there's been one study, <laughs> one. And I went through, y'all, I combed through this research. I saw, I found six that were decent. And then when I looked to see if they were really like significant enough for us to talk about today, I only really found one. And so for that one study, what they found was individuals that are Val-Val or GG, they may have reduced symptom severity when treated with methylphenidate. So there's some hope there. Um, you know, a 
again, put a put an asterisk or a grain of salt on that because we're still learning. In this case, this study looked at 122 cases of individuals with ADHD. They did the experiment and they did the genetic testing and they wanted to see if there was going to be a difference in the way the patients responded to methylphenidate depending upon which of those three genetic buckets they fell in. They just happened to find that for bow bow, they had reduced symptom severity for those individuals. Still some work to be done there. So if you are ever curious about which medication may be right for you, I encourage you again to get genetic testing. It's, an, it's, it's one of those things that continues to be of value to you over the course of your life. And it's an easy way for you to know which medications might be the best fit for you. So that's comped. Shorter video than the other one because there's a lot less to say. Uh, so good job for those of you that are Val Val. If this research turns out to be, you know, the solid thing that we're hoping it, it, it is. Um, good for you that you're Val Val. I actually don't know my status in comp, so I will be getting genetic testing here soon. But um, the three buckets, you gotta find out which one of those buckets you fall, you fall into. Is it Val Val, is it Val Met, or is it Met Met? And that might change the way your ADHD medications work in your system, in particular, if you happen to be Val Val. So that's it. Second gene, no problems. We're gonna go on to the third one. I promise I'm gonna make it through this whole series. I have committed myself to make it through this whole series. Um, but that's it. So I hope that was helpful. Comment below any questions that you may have. We'll continue to talk about pharmacogenomics and genetics and ADHD and how all of that comes together. But I love to hear your questions because that helps me understand what's most of interest. Anyway, see you next week. Bye.